and, uh, and say thanks again for being with us this evening. Thanks to uh, the staff from Mailman and I'm gonna hand it over to Ina to get us started. Thank you so much, Amanda. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us um, in this virtual space. My name is Ina Rodriguez. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm an admissions coordinator here at Mailman. I have my, ad uh, my email address available here if, if you wanted to reach out. It's ar3557 at columbia.edu. So to get started, uh, what is public health, right? So public health is defined as the science and art of protecting and improving the health of populations through education, promotion of healthy lifestyles, and research for disease and injury prevention. So it is a little different um, from medicine. So in public health, we prevent diseases um, and injury and public health researchers, practitioners, and educators, they work with communities and populations to identify the causes of disease and um, to implement large scale solutions. So a good example of um, public health doing what it's supposed to do is that in the last 100 years, we've increased life expectancy by 45 years. We were able to do this um, with things like vaccine development, providing access to clean drinking water and educating populations on living a healthy lifestyle. So our school, we currently educate approximately 1,800 students across the board, and we have six different departments. We have biostatistics, environmental health sciences, epidemiology, health policy and management, population and family health, sociomedical sciences. We also offer a general public health track. And then we also have other degree programs. So aside from the Masters of Public Health, we also have the Masters of Healthcare Administration, Masters of Science and two doctoral programs, which are DRPH and PhD. Um, just so everyone knows this application cycle, we are not accepting applicants into the biostatistics department, um, but that would be the only one. So the Columbia MPH 4 plus 1, what does that curriculum look like for you? So in addition to your bachelor's, which you would earn from Barnard, you will also have an opportunity to study away in the fall of your senior year and begin earning credits towards your master's of public health with us at Columbia Mailman. So you would complete your master's in the year after completing your bachelor's. Um, so pretty much in the fall of your senior year, you will come to us to complete the core. And then in the spring, you return to Barnard to complete your bachelor's. The summer after your bachelor's, you get to enjoy your life. And then um, that fall, you come back to us, Mailman, um, to complete your master's of public health program. So when you return, as you can see with the blocks here, you are enrolled in your discipline, leadership, and integration of science and practice, which we call ISP. And I'll go into detail about what that means. And I would like to show you just so that you see the difference. Um, this is what the curriculum looks like for our two-year MPH students. So it is the same curriculum. They're still enrolled in the core and ISP in their discipline and leadership. So the only difference is the dark blue puzzle pieces that you see here, um, which is a certificate. So our two-year MPH students do have an opportunity to earn a New York State certificate degree in an area of interest of additional expertise. So you can either dive deeper into your department of choice, or you can select from a different department just to broaden your horizons in public health. So if after this presentation, you feel that the four plus one program wouldn't be a good fit for you, you can also consider our two-year MPH. So the core, um, which is what you would complete the fall semester of your senior year. Um, the core is actually a, a hallmark of our program. It was created in 2012, and actually a lot of the other public health schools have modeled their core curriculum after ours because it was so successful. Um, so it consists of six different studios from left to right, foundations of public health, research methods and applications, which we call REMA, determinants of health, public health interventions, global and developmental perspectives, and health systems. So within each of the six different studios, there are 16 modules. And these are all taught by faculty across our six different departments. So you're really getting an interdisciplinary perspective here. Um, the modules do build on each other. So you might discuss an issue um, in ethics and foundation of public health, and then discuss how to quantitatively research that issue in REMA. 
And then you would discuss how the determinants of health will play into the ethical issue in question. Just an example of how um, they do build on each other. So some of the courses do run the full length of the course semester, like REMA, and then others will come in during other points. So everyone will start with Foundations of Public Health, and you don't get into health systems, which is the dark blue at the end, until you're halfway through the term, because you would need some basis in these different areas before you get to um, these courses. So I know the core does sound um, confusing, and we actually do advise that students do not have any extracurricular commitments during this time, just so that they can be successful. Um, but our students are fully supported um, during the core, and um, you wouldn't have to worry about that. So um, aside from the core, I mentioned leadership. So um, leadership, this is a, a professional degree, right? So with leadership, we it will require you to have leadership skills. So during this course, you will learn how to have effective working relationships and how to implement innovative solutions in the workplace. So right after you're done with the core um, and you come back um, after, after your bachelor's, you're enrolled in leadership and that's where you're learning these skills. You'll also be enrolled in ISP, which is Integration of Science and Practice. If you haven't noticed, we love a good acronym here <laughs> at Columbia. Um, so it is a two semester course where you are with a small group of students um, and it is case-based. So you're investigating how the things that you learned during the core come together. In this example here, you see that in 2005, when the New York City Board of Health was debating whether or not to propose a ban on trans fats in city restaurants, they had to discuss what are the benefits of this policy? How can we implement a solution for this issue? So our students love ISP because you get to apply what you learned um, and you get to hear from your other student colleagues who are studying in different departments and are starting to have expertise in a variety of different areas. So they're able to bring an additional lens to the conversation. Our program is so inter, um, interdisciplinary in that way. And to give you a sense of the courses that um, our students are enrolled with, depending on the department, for EHS, which is Environmental Health Sciences, they're looking at how toxins um, and, and the environment can affect our health. So courses like Environmental Determinants of Health, um, Fundamentals of Toxicology. Our epidemiology students are studying the patterns and causes of illnesses and injury. So courses like Clinical Epidemiology and Applications of Epidemiology Research Methods. Our health policy and management students are focusing on the development, implementation, and evaluation of health policies and administrative functioning of health systems. So they're taking more like managerial courses and things like finance, um, health policy, and political systems. Population and family health. These students are studying the legal policy and human rights dimensions of health, particularly in low-income um, environments. So they're focusing on reproductive health, sexual health, child health. Um, their courses are health and human rights advocacy, current issues in sexual health. And last but not least, it's sociomedical sciences. And they are dedicated to understanding the social forces that influence health. So um, pretty much how health and policy outcomes are influenced by race, gender, or even social conditions like poverty. Um, so their classes are advanced intervention design, survey research. So it's really important that you determine which department closely aligns with what you're interested in, because that is the department that you are applying to and the one reviewing your application. So you want to make sure that your goals are very clear um, when you apply. The practicum. So all of our students participate in the practicum and you can engage in research with faculty or you can do public health related volunteer work. Um, there are opportunities to complete your practicum either in the US or internationally. And then you will complete your practicum during the summer. So after you've completed um, the majority of the program or all of the program, I should say. And you're not alone in this search. The department will actually help you out. They'll give you a list of different organizations that we've already partnered with. And then you will contact them to interview and to um, attain your practicum. 
but also the career service office will help you field practice I'm sorry office will assist you with this so you're not alone and there's never been a time that a student couldn't find a practicum so good news there IPE interprofessional education so this is a requirement um we are located on the Columbia University Medical Center campus so we're alongside the School of Medicine, nursing, the dental school, nutrition, occupational therapy. So we have the opportunity to ask students across these different fields um, to come together and think about health-related questions. Um, so it's a great opportunity for you as a public health student to help translate to our clinical students the idea of how something that they're looking at on an individual patient basis may apply to a population and vice versa. Um, and we actually help you fulfill this requirement. On IPE day, classes are canceled across all of these schools um, so that you can come together and meet with the other students to discuss some of these issues. Student life. We have over 25 active student-led organizations and they have a variety of focuses. So some students are involved in community-based organizations or affinity group base such as LGBTQ plus or the Black and Latinx Student Caucus, um, for example. And then some are focused on career tracks. If you come to our campus and you feel that there is a need for an organization, we actually encourage our students to submit a form and let us know what they would like to implement and we help you get that started. There's also a lot of opportunities to learn outside of the classroom. So we have ground rounds, which occur on our campus monthly, and the departments also host a variety of talks throughout the year. Um, we also offer student personal advising and support. Mary, my colleague, who is currently in the space, she actually assists our students um, with that support, whatever it is that they may need. The Office of Diversity, Culture, and Inclusion. So they um, started a program that we call SSGA, which is Self, Social, and Global Awareness. And all of our students are enrolled in this during orientation. Um, so during this, it's really cool. Faculty and students come together to discuss how our privilege and perspectives influence the way that we engage in public health and scientific work. The Office of Diversity, Culture, and Inclusion also has two mentorship programs available. One is called RISE, and it's for first-generation students to be paired with another first-generation student at the school, like a second-year student to be a, a guide for you. Or you can also um, join Mosaic, which is a mentorship program between faculty and a student. So you'll be matched with a faculty member. And I've heard from a lot of current students that this is a way that they either found their practicum um, with help from their faculty member or found employment even after um, graduating. So I think it, it's a really cool mentorship program. And the career services team, um, they, they help you with your resume, with salary negotiation, mock interviews even. Um, and every Monday, our students receive an email with different um, employment opportunities. So they do host career fairs in the fall. Um, I know before it was in person where like over 70 employers would come to campus. Right now they've switched over to a virtual format. Hopefully next year it's back to in person, but our students do get to meet with different employers and either hand in their resume or just ask questions about um, working at these organizations. We also have housing available. Um, it wouldn't be necessary during the during the core for you since you're right at Barnard, but um, if you wanted to um, live in on-campus housing to complete the program that is available to you, they range from studios to one to two bedroom apartments. And the prices range from about $850 a month to about $1,300 a month. So um, it's pretty affordable, I think, for, for New York rent. And just to show you what good of a job our career services team is doing, um, this survey was conducted in 2020, um, six months after um, the graduating class. And what they found was 87% were already employed and 8% decided to continue their education. Um, the latest stats that I received um, from the previous class is actually it, it increased. So 90% are employed and 7% are continuing their education, whether that's a second master's or a doctoral degree. 
And so that you get a sense of the different things that our students are doing after graduation, you see that they are involved in hospitals, um, insurance companies, nonprofit organizations, pharmaceutical companies. Um, this year, we actually celebrated our 100 years and our slogan is public health is everything. So you can really uh, do a lot of things with this degree. And um, this year shows you the different job titles that these students um, hold. So you see a lot of consultants, um, researchers, managerial positions like program manager. And then this slide here, um, these are actual um, employers by our alum. So uh, you'll see a few marketing firms, nonprofit organizations, government and humanitarian agencies, um, consulting groups. So um, like I mentioned before, the careers office does host a fair where the majority of these employers do come in and meet our students. So now that you found out all about the four plus one program, you probably want to apply. So it is a two-step review process. First, Barnard faculty will review your application um, and then they will forward it over to us for review. And we have a few prerequisites. So it doesn't matter what your major is. Again, public health is everything, but we do ask um, that you have one semester of calculus, which is required for any of the departments that you are applying to. Um, if you're interested in environmental health, at least one year of biology and or one year of chemistry is recommended. And then we do have a minimum GPA requirement of a 3.5. And this is because we're not requiring um, the GREs. So we need to make sure that you have evidence of quantitative and analytical writing ability in order to be successful in the program. It is very quant heavy. And the application is due December 1st. So you will need to submit your application, your academic transcripts, your resume or CV, which you can list any volunteer work, uh, poster presentations, um, internships. You have to submit a personal statement of no more than 500 words. Um, and you don't just want to let us know why Columbia Public Health. You want to get specifics. You want to answer, why do you want to study public health? What was your call to action in the field? Why is this four plus one program um, the perfect opportunity for you? Why is it the right fit? And most importantly, why is the department that you're applying to a good fit for your career goals? So remember, they are the ones um, reviewing your application. So you don't want to apply to epidemiology, but talk about population and family health and your statement of purpose, that could be misleading to the um, committee. So just make sure that you're very clear and concise in your statement of purpose of what your goals are to the department that you are applying to. You will also need to submit a coursework completion worksheet, um, which is completed with your app um, by your advisor. So it will just let us know. Um, it was just them signing off, letting, them, letting us know that the academic plan will still let you be successful in your program while enrolling in ours. You need two letters of recommendation from um, someone that's familiar with you. So I always say, um, choose someone, not, not that they're just going to say you were in the top 10% of the class, but someone that really knows your strengths as a student, someone that knows how prepared you are for this type of degree already and someone that knows what your career goals are. A good tip is to hand in a draft of your statement of purpose to your recommender. That way they get a sense of what you actually would like to do um, with your degree. And then you would also need a letter of support from a faculty member that's willing to sponsor and mentor you during, um, during your, your senior year. And again, the GRE requirement is waived. So those are all of the requirements to apply to the four plus one program. If you want to learn more or meet one to one with myself or with someone in financial aid, um, you can scan this QR code. I welcome you to attend even one of the upcoming department sessions um, to really get a sense of which department is a good fit for you. And we also have application workshops where we um, give tips on submitting a strong application. So please scan the QR code and and register for something that might interest you. And that is um, my presentation. And at this time, I would like to open up the space for any questions that you may have. 
please feel free to raise a hand, put a question in the chat, use your camera microphone. Kushi? Hi, um, do you mind going to the previous slide with the QR code? Oh, sure, sorry, I'll leave it up. Also, I had a quick question. So I'm a junior um, applying to this program this year. And um, could we talk a little bit about deadlines um, for the application process when you want, when recommendations should be in by? And stuff like yeah, that? sure. Everything should be in by December 1st. Yes. Um, so you want to make sure that you are letting your recommender know. I would even say lie a little bit. Say November 15th just to buy yourself time. That's one part of the application that you can control is how quickly someone will submit something for you on your behalf. So definitely get started early with that. And just for reference, the way that it works is um, after December 1st, the Barnard faculty liaisons for this pathway will do the initial review of the applications and they will conduct interviews for a certain number of applicants. Um, once they do interviews, then they will move the finalists on to be reviewed by the departments at Mailman. So um, December 1st really is a, a, an important deadline because we tried to do those interviews in December before the end of the year. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, it looks like we've got a, um, a question about financial aid in the chat and uh, maybe I'll start and then mailman folks, you can jump in as well. So the question is whether financial aid is offered through Barnard or through mailman. Um, and is there, uh, uh, sorry, um, a, re a loan requirement and a required student contribution. So um, for the fourth year of the pathway, like if you're admitted um, during your senior year, you are still on your Barnard financial aid package. So you're gonna be paying tuition to Barnard only. Um, and you'll have kind of, you know, the same financial aid setup that you typically have, uh, you know, barring any changes in family income or things like that. Um, the, uh, the second year of the pathway is um, for, uh, is a mailman tuition, you're only a mailman student at that point, so you'd be uh, working with them. Um, we also have an agreement to provide kind of a tuition discount for, um, for Barnard students who are admitted to the pathway. So everybody who's admitted to the pathway gets uh, the same discount. Um, and then otherwise, I would say uh, it's a pretty typical financial aid process in terms of, you know, uh, completing forms, they'll assess your contribution, and then loans could definitely be involved. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so aside from your, your FAFSA, so you can um, obviously qualify for loans through there. Um, you are also considered for need-based aid. So please submit your FAFSA because um, this based aid could range from $5,000 to about $8,000. Um, and you're also reviewed for merit scholarships. So sometimes there's a, there's a question on the application about your experiences. Sometimes they'll see an experience that you have and we actually have a scholarship for that. So um, the committee will nominate you. Yes, I'm sorry, is it Chiamaka? Yep, that's right, thank you. Um, I have two questions actually. The first is during the first semester of your senior year, are you only taking classes at Mailman or with some classes at Barnard? Correct. You would only be enrolled in the core at Millman during that fall of your senior year. Okay. We have a, so we do, we do uh, kind of have uh, some flexibility. So for example, if you are uh, writing a senior thesis and you have a thesis seminar at Barnard, um, it's possible to do that alongside the core. Um, it's really tough to do more than one course at Barnard in the senior fall semester. So this is really important, particularly if there are any pre-health people out there um, thinking about applying to medical school or something like that in the future, uh, because, you know, if you still need to take science courses during your senior year, this pathway probably isn't the best fit. Um, I'm happy to talk about other options within the public health space, which are many, including other options at Columbia, um, but definitely you want to be planning for the minimal number of credits at Barnard in senior fall. Okay, thank you. And then my second question was about the calculus requirement. Um, if we have taken calculus at a different institution that's not Barnard, would that still count towards the requirement? Yeah, uh, you just 
probably should make sure that the credit is transferred to Barnard so that it's on okay. your transcript here. All right, it sounds good. Thank you. Yes, and thank you. And for anyone else, we also accept AP credits. Um, if you have AP credits in calculus or statistics. Any other question, either um, regarding the application or the student experience at Columbia Public Health? Uh, there's a question in the chat. Can the letter of support be from an academic advisor or does it have to be from one of the recommenders? Uh, so it could be two letters total or three letters total, right? So the letter of support could be included in one of your letters of recommendation. Or if you have two letters of recommendation plus maybe an advisor that you're going to be working with in your senior year, thesis advisor or something like that, they could provide the letter of support. Um, the letter of support does not have to be lengthy. Basically, it needs to attest that you and that person have met, you've talked about your plans for how you're going to get everything done with your Barnard degree, and that that person is going to uh, work with you during your senior year to make sure that you finish all of your undergraduate requirements. Because our number one priority is that you graduate from Barnard uh, first. Oh, uh, Kushi, do you have another question? Yes, um, just expanding on that question. So this letter of support is also the one that will say like they will set financially support us, but that just means like, is that the same letter? No financial, no financial things here. This is uh, just academic. I mean, sponsor. Uh, the, when we, wasn't there a letter about sponsoring, like the sponsor or? Right, so, uh, so there are uh, two required letters of recommendation. Um, mm -hmm. The, uh, one of those letters of recommendation could also include, you know, the letter of support, or you could have a separate third document submitted from a different individual. Um, but the support here is only about, I am, a, you know, typically a faculty member who works with this student and, you know, we've got a plan for them to finish their undergraduate degree. That's really the point of, of that letter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and there is a question in the chat. What is the acceptance rate for the four plus one program? It, uh, it varies from year to year because it really depends on the number of applicants that we have. Um, like I uh, said in the chat earlier, uh, about five people are admitted to the pathway, uh, to the mailman pathway uh, from Barnard each year. Um, we've had uh, increasing numbers of applicants the past few years that we've done it. So the acceptance rate has gone down because we've had more applicants, but um, the, the class size has stayed the same. I'm going to share my email in the chat one more time, just in case anybody wants to take it down and reach out to me after the session with their questions. Um, and then I'll also share um, Charles Liriano, the director of financial aid, his contact information if you wanted to meet with him to discuss the fees and um, the financial support available. Thank you. Um, the number of people who applied last year, uh, gosh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it was between 25 and 30. Um, but again, I, you know, that doesn't necessarily predict um, how many people are gonna apply this year. Um, there's a pre-health question in the chat. Uh, when you take the MCAT really has a lot to do with when you plan to apply. Um, if we haven't met before, I would totally suggest maybe chatting with me in a separate space about pre-health, I will say, um, the four plus one pathway is not a pathway that is even kind of intended for people who are interested in clinical careers. As, as Ina mentioned, um, public health and medicine, while they have a lot to say to each other, are not the same training path. Um, so I would say that, you know, some of our uh, alums of this pathway and some of the current students are interested in pursuing clinical careers, but it's definitely not the majority. So, you know, if you're a person who really is genuinely interested mostly in health policy or maybe, you know, research in environmental health, um, this pathway could be a great fit. Uh, it's, it's not just for people who are interested in, in clinical professions. Yeah, and another option if you were interested in going into med medical school first is that we have an accelerated program available for those. Um, so a lot of medical students actually come to us during year three or four during their gap year to complete the program in one year. The only thing is that then you don't have that certificate component. So that that would be a difference. Yeah. 
and definitely MD, PhD or MD, MPH programs abound out there in the world. Um, so for folks who are interested in clinical stuff, but maybe don't think they can make this particular pathway fit into their undergraduate schedule, that is okay. There are tons and tons of ways to, uh, to get education in public health. Um, it is ever more timely and there are ever more options to do it. So I'm always happy to chat with folks um, who are interested in public health, but maybe um, don't know if this pathway is exactly the right fit. Any other questions before we wrap up? We're gonna share the recording of this mess, uh, this, <laughs> this event with everybody um, who's registered for, for today's program. I'll also send a couple of resources for those of you who are juniors this year and are thinking about submitting an application to the program in the next couple months. Um, I'll include a copy of our coursework completion form, which you should definitely share with uh, you know, your major advisor. Um, it'll ask you to just kind of plan out um, what you need to do to finish your degree between now and, uh, and the end of your fourth year. And um, I'll include the links for the application, all that other good stuff that you need to, to get the application working by December 1st. So thank thanks, you. Thanks so much, Ina. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Julie. Uh, and thanks everybody for coming. Uh, we'll see you around. Have thank a good Thank you, evening. Amanda. Thank you all and good luck with everything. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.